Hello, I'm Coach Furstenberg. I'm a physical education teacher here in Cherokee County. Today I'm going to be doing a lesson with you all about buckets. Now, some of you might be thinking, what in the world can you do with buckets? Well, first you're going to need to find out what size of bucket you have at your house. You might have a small bucket. You might have a regular size bucket, maybe in the kitchen under the sink. Or you might have the largest of the buckets out in your garage somewhere. If you do not have a bucket at your house, you might also look for something in the kitchen. This is something I brought from my house that will also work quite well in case you don't have a bucket. Another supply I'd like to start with before I get into my games is a dry erase board and a dry erase marker. This will help me keep track of my shooting percentage as I move through all of my skills. Before I do any throwing, I like to warm up my shoulders and my arms a little bit. So let's get started by doing some arm circles forward. We're going to do this for about 10 seconds forward. And then switch and go 10 seconds backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The next stretch I'm going to do is across the front of my body. I'm going to hold this for about 10 seconds. I put my hand on my elbow, pull across. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And then switch to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. In my class, I always make sure that we name our muscles that we're stretching. So in this case, we're stretching our deltoids. Another thing I might do for my warm up is take a couple laps. Now, since I'm in the gym, it would be easy for me to do. If you're at a park, it would also be easy maybe for you to walk around the park one or two times. If you're at home or in a small space, you could either walk in place, march in place, or jog in place. And then sometimes I like to switch it up by going with high knees, really high as I can go, or going the other way, leaning forward and getting the shoes to come up by my bottom. I'm going to do a series of throws into this large bucket using different equipment. Now, some of you might be thinking, why is he holding these socks? Well, this would be in case you don't have a ball or a bouncy ball to throw. You could easily at home wad up a bunch of your socks and have it as a softball that would be safe to throw inside a small space. On the floor, you can see that I have a line that's easy for me to keep track of where I'd be throwing from. Again, I'm going to be throwing 10 times. This will be an easy way for me to keep track of my shooting percentage. I'm going to start with an underhand throw, and I'm throwing with my right hand, so I'll be stepping forward with my left foot. And I missed my first one. Oh, I got my second one. Got my third one, I'm on a streak. Got it again! And I missed. That's okay though. I may have a positive mindset and I'm gonna keep trying all the way up to 10. Now it's your turn. Now I'm switching from my underhand throw to shooting it more like a basketball and sometimes it kind of looks almost like a dart throwing action. So again, I'm gonna shoot all the way up to 10. Let's see what I can do. One. Out of one. Two out of two. That's 100% for those of you who are keeping track. Oh, I jinxed myself. Missed it again. And I missed again. Now I'm switching over to the socks just to show you that it gives you a little bit of a different kind of throw. These are a little bit lighter than the ball I was using. And let's see what I can do. I'm gonna mix it up this time and do some overhand and some underhand. I'm aiming, I'm focusing, I'm concentrating. One, two, three, 
One more overhand. There we go. It's three for three. Let's try an underhand. Missed. One more. And I made it. One of the things you might be noticing is the distance of, wh of where I'm shooting from. If it's hard for you, of course you could move closer. If it's easy for you, you might want to take a few steps back. I'm going to progress now into using this Mega Bouncy Ball. And with the Mega Bouncy Ball, you can usually find these for about 50 cents to a dollar at a store. Um, you can also order it online if you need to. Um, let's give it a shot. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to start by just trying to throw it in and then I'm going to move to bouncing the ball. Woo! There's one. Oh, it bounced out. I'm going to take a step back and see what that looks like. When that happens in class, they say, Coach, can we still count it? And I usually say, mm, Depends. And I missed. I was waiting to see if it was going to bounce back on a rebound to come in, but it didn't. Now I'm ready to take it to the next level where I try to bounce it using a proper angle into the bucket. We also talk about this word in class a lot, and the word is trajectory, which is a path. I'm gonna write the definition for that for you later, but you'll see, I'm gonna to try to bounce it in. Oh, and I just missed. I'm gonna try it again. I'm not gonna give up. Oh, it hit the rim of the bucket. Did it again. That's 0 for 3. If you take a look, I've now set up two buckets and I'm going to attempt to overhand throw this ball to knock the bucket off the top of the larger bucket. And again, if it's hard for you, you might want to stand close to begin with. This would be pretty easy. So what I, in my opinion, so what I would do is I'm going to back up a few steps and try to throw from here using my proper overhand throw. Since I'm throwing with my right hand, I'm going to be stepping forward with my left foot. Let's take a look to see if I can knock it off the top. And I missed. I'll try it again. And I'm using the ball to help rebound my shot. You might not have that available at your house. I missed again. Now I missed three times. So what should I probably do? If you said move closer, you're right. This time I'm going to use this ball to roll it like a bowling ball towards my bucket, which I have laid on its side. Now I'm going to count it if it goes in and comes out, but I'm going to stand at a distance of about six feet away. Now it's been a long time since probably anybody's been bowling because the bowling alleys have been closed. So I might be a little rusty, but I'm gonna to try to roll it in there. Got it, that's one. And if you remember, I like to go to uh, the number 10. But I, for this video, I'm just gonna go to five. That's two out of two. If I make it again, you know I'm gonna step back and try to make it a little harder. Let's see. Oh, I hit the rim. But I'm still gonna try. I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna back up a little bit behind my line and let it roll. Should I go really far, you think? I'm gonna back way up. Here we go, here we go, here we go. How far do you think that is? Looks to me about 15 feet. Yes, I did it! I'm going to take this, I'm gonna to try to throw the ball up in the air and do an under the leg catch. Now in order for this to work, I've gotta be controlled, I've got to focus, and I've really got to watch what I'm doing. Let's see if I can do this. Yes. And now I'm going to attempt it with my other hand. An 
Another exercise you can do is just flipping the bucket off of your foot into your hand. This one is mega difficult. I'm gonna try to throw the ball up in the air. At the same time, try to flip the bucket off my foot and try to catch them. This is gonna be tricky. We're gonna see if we can make it happen. Did it! Now, in this case, I have a wall to use and at your house, you might be looking for an area where you can throw off it safely and not do any damage. If you have a basketball hoop at your house or a backboard or a park that you can go to, those are a great way to throw a ball off of and try to catch it. So what I'm going to do to start with is an underhand toss, have it bounce off the wall and try to bounce one time and catch it in my bucket. It'll look like this. Throw, bounce, catch. Let's try that again. This time I'm going to take two big steps backwards and try it again. Throw, bounce, catch. Now I'm going to see if I can throw them off the wall, have it bounce two times and catch it. Throw, one, two, oh, and did you see my feet? I really had to move. So you're going to be getting some exercise in there. Be thinking of what would be the next step that I could do to make this harder or easier? Think about it. I'm going to move in close and try to do a straight bounce off of the wall into the bucket. Now with this much force, it's a good chance that this ball might pop out of here. And if it pops out of here, I'm going to just try to catch it and scoop it on the bounce. There's one, two, three, Oh, and there that happened and I caught it. You gotta make sure you're focusing on the ball. And then I'm gonna switch it to overhand. Woo! Oh, and then it bounced again. It's okay, feel free to experiment with it and have some fun. You might also try switching it to your non-dominant hand. That means your opposite hand that you don't normally throw with. Let's give that a shot. Left handed, bounce and catch. There you go. So far, I've been using this part of the bucket to shoot my ball in. Now, I'm going to flip it over and use this part in the bouncy ball. I'm gonna see if I can bounce the ball on top of the bucket, the solid part, 10 times in a row without it falling off. You think I can do it? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes! Let me show you a few ways you can modify that skill and take it to the next level. I'm going to bounce it on top and then try to churn my bucket and catch it. And then we're going to keep trying to make it a little bit harder and a little bit more different each time. So that way, then there's the bounce, dribble, catch. Then there's the bounce, flip my bucket. Oh! I dropped it. I'm going to try it again though. I'm going to try it again. Let's see. It's important that when we make mistakes that we keep going. Don't let a couple drops discourage you from trying something new. Nobody's an expert on the first time, including myself. Get me warm back up again, here we go. Did it, I did it. For this one, I'm gonna use a lot of force to bounce the ball down. As it bounces down, it goes up in the air. I'm going to try to throw and flip my bucket in the air, catch it, and then catch the ball. If it takes a bounce or two, that's all right. Ooh. Do you see that? I'm going to do a series of progressions to see how many bounces it can go and I can still catch it. We'll start with just the easy one. One, then two, one, two, catch. You know it's coming. One, two, three, catch. I wonder if I can make it all the way to ten. One, two, three, 
four. clockwise action. The next activity I'm going to do is the bucket flip challenge. I'm going to pick two of my favorite exercises. In this case, it's jumping jacks and squats. Now I'm going to flip the bucket and if it lands right side up, I'm going to do three squats. If it tips over and doesn't land, like you would do a bottle flip, then I'm going to do three jumping jacks. And I'm going to do this for one minute. So you would set your timer after I show you for one minute to make sure that this happens. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Trying to get it to land on its bottom to do the squats. Nope, still jumping jacks. One, two, three. Oh, that was close. One, two, three. Now it's really important that you pick two exercises that you like to do. That way, if you keep getting mistakes, like I just made and never had it land on its bottom, you're still doing something that you enjoy. The next activity I'm going to show you is the shuttle run. You can set this up however you'd like. I have the two distances set at about 15 yards apart from each other. You would need a timer or you can just count to yourself. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my bouncy ball. I'm going to run down to the bucket, drop it off, pick up the uh, socks, run it back, Drop it off in this bucket, pick up my softball, drop it down in the bucket, and run back. Now I'm making the prediction that I should be able to do this in less than 30 seconds. Some of you are going to be much faster than I am, and some of you might have more equipment or less equipment out for you. It all depends on what you want to do and how you want to set it up. On your mark, get set, go! I wanted to make sure that I gave you a tip that was taught to me a long time ago about finishing races. Now, I just ran the relay race, and as you're going to 
finish the relay race, you want to make sure you run through the finish line. So if I start slowing down before the finish line happens, my time is going to be much slower. So I want to make sure that as I'm going, I don't slow down until I've crossed the finish line. This is a tip that you can use when you're running races. This is a tip that you can use on the playground. This is a tip that you can use when you're running the pacer test. In the next part of this lesson, I'd like to show you some cardiovascular activities of stepping over your bucket and then moving to the advanced level of possibly jumping over your bucket. Remember, safety first. You always want to make sure that you're doing something that is not dangerous or something that you're going to get hurt. I'm going to start by just stepping over my bucket. So if I step over it, I'm going to touch and tap the top. Then I'm going to switch to the other side and tap the top. Switch to the other side, tap the top. And I'm going to do this for 20 seconds. Now you go. 20 seconds and start. In this next progression, you're going to see from smallest to medium to largest, it should be one, two, three. Now you might not have that many buckets at your house, but you could slide something underneath the bucket to raise it higher. So it would look like this. I'm just gonna put my foot up here and tap it. Get my knees up high. I got my opposite hand and opposite feet working. I can do it a little faster. And you're going to do this for 20 seconds. Ready and go. Here's that next level. Still working on going fast. We're gonna go for 20 seconds and go. Now you can see, here comes my ultimate level challenge for today. I'm going up high. Touching up top. One word that I mentioned earlier in the lesson was trajectory, and that is the flight path of something flying through the air. Another word that I had mentioned was the word angle. And when you're bouncing the ball into the bucket, a lot of it determines what kind of angle and what kind of force you should be using. So as I step back, I'm trying to figure out where am I going to bounce the ball so that it lands in the bucket. Was that the right angle? Obviously not. In many sports, including basketball and what I've done here today, you'll have what's known as your shooting percentage. That is, how many makes you have out of how many attempts you make. Earlier in the lesson, I had my dry erase board and I numbered it one out of 10. So what I would do is how many makes I have versus how many attempts I make. In this next series, I'm going to show you many ways that you can use your bucket to train your abdominal muscles. I'm gonna start by placing it between my feet and laying on my back. What I'm going to do is just slowly raise the bucket up and down, up and down. And you know, I'm gonna to go to that magical number of 10. Let's see how long you can go. So if I'm here, I'm gonna lift it up and down, up and down. 
Keep going, up and down. This next set is going to be a little more challenging and I'm gonna see if I can do it without making a mistake. But you know my philosophy, if I make a mistake, I'm just gonna keep trying. I've taken this soft ball so that if it falls on me, it won't hurt at all. And again, you might consider using a wad of socks or maybe a bunched up shirt. Whatever you have at the house, it's good to use. I'm laying on my back. I'm going to use my ab muscles to pull the bucket towards me. In control. And then try to put it back. Now there's many ways you can do push-ups. In this case, I'm going to stick one hand up on top of the bucket and keep my other hand to the side. I'm also going to stay on my knees for this part to make it a modified push-up so you can see exactly my form as I go down and up and down and up. I can really feel the pull through my chest muscle. Then I would switch sides and go over here and I'm looking to do how many of these? If you said 10, you are correct. In conclusion, there's so many things that you can do with just a bucket that's laying around the house. Please take some time to think about how you can use math, science, PE, and all the parts of STEM to use your bucket to create at your house safely. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us.